The sixth round of the China-U.S. Strategic and Economic Dialogue Summit has wrapped up in Beijing, and both sides describe the outcome as a, quote, full success. But some sticking points do remain, like the renminbi exchange rate. Nevertheless, both countries push for a bilateral investment treaty is progressing as planned. And Guanxin joins us live now from Beijing with an update on today's summit. Guanxin, what's the latest? Yes, Michelle, China and the U.S. concluded the dialogue with a consensus on more than 100 issues of common concern, including anti-terrorism, fishing rights, energy policy and military affairs. China's Assistant Foreign Minister Zheng Zeguan said the meeting, quote, injected vitality in building a new type of great power relationship between Beijing and Washington. So under discussion is a proposed bilateral investment treaty. The assistant foreign minister said he expects the major provisions of this treaty to be worked out by the end of this year. Discussions on business sectors in both countries are currently off limits. The so-called negative list will start in early 2015. The U.S. is pushing for more access to Chinese markets, especially sensitive industries that China wants to protect. And China wants the U.S. to clarify its national security review on Chinese investment and possibly scale it back. Both Chinese and American officials emphasize that despite all the ups and downs, China and the U.S. are very important trading partners. The U.S. market remains a bright spot for China's foreign trade as exports rose 7.5 in June from 6.3 percent uh, in May. These hard-earned outcomes will pave the way for the leaders' meeting during APEC this year and inject positive energy into the major power relations between China and the U.S. Tackling climate change was another important topic with eight joint projects aimed at capturing and storing carbon and setting up more efficient power distribution networks. The two nations also agreed to adopt stronger fuel efficiency standards for heavy and light-duty vehicles and greenhouse gas emission standards. Taken together, these actions, we hope, will send a clear message. The world's two largest greenhouse gas emitters committed to advancing low-carbon economic growth and significantly reducing our country's greenhouse gas emissions. The two countries are expected to release more details on the trade deal in the next several days. Back to Michelle. Guanxin, certainly a lot of progress has been made at the summit, but a big sticking point remains the renminbi and the exchange rate. There's been a lot of pressure from the U.S. there. What's been the reaction from Chinese officials? Yes, Michelle, though the U.S. pressed on the U.S. exchange rate, China will continue its slow approach to currency reform. Speaking on the sideline of the high-level talks, Chinese central bank Zhou Xiaochuan said China could reform the interest rate market within two years. He also added that China planned to scale back, uh, back intervention in foreign exchange markets when conditions permit. A central bank which is at the center of China's latest round of growth incentive measures stressed concerns over inflation and growth rather than property rights. Back to Michelle. All right, thanks so much. Guanxin live from Beijing. Well, despite the agreements reached by both sides, some issues remain unresolved, and among them are cybersecurity concerns. The official U.S.-China Cyber Working Group talks remain suspended. Beijing called off negotiations in May after the U.S. accused and indicted several Chinese military officials for cyber spying. Another sticking point is maritime security. China has asked Washington to take an objective and impartial stance regarding territorial disputes in the East and South China Seas. The U.S. has said it hasn't taken sides, but criticized China's behavior in that matter.